Reckonous fire is the name I've given to the uh, nine eruptions that we have since the 2021 in the Reckonous Peninsula. These are starting from the uh, cells of the uplift and convection inside the earth core, which leads to the convection in the mantle probably. And then through the extension of the earth crust in this area, we will have eruption. They are starting from the Reckonous because that's the first point that the uh, mid-Atlantic extension reach hits the land and from there extend to the north. That's Eurasia and America pulling apart in that area. And it's historically creating many eruptions in that area. We call them systems, volcanic systems. The first one was a volcanic system, newly discovered, uh, Fagadestrial system. This was the first eruption that we had in this series. Then followed by the Meridal eruption, just a few kilometers to the north east of that, and then the Little Quarter, which was a bigger one and lasted longer, around two months, shattering of the cone of the volcano we first saw here. And the area was covered after that with this lava permanently. The next eruption was in the December 2023. In the um, Schwarzenegger volcanic system, it didn't last more than a few days, but it covered some areas in the Sunduka crater chain. The next eruption in the February actually reached the town of the Green Devil. It sliced through the defensive wall that we built there and burned part of the town of the Green Devil. A few houses were burned. It meant that our defenses were not, were not adequate in that point. If it was not because of the small spur of the eruption in that area, it didn't last long. The map of it you can see here. The next one was in the f uh, February. The January one was the one which burned uh, part of the Green Devil. February one was quite dramatic in that sense. We could see everything from the beginning to the end almost. Uh, and it covered a larger area compared to that previous one. And you can see the map of extension of this reach the, and cut some of the lines, uh, pipelines, and the access road to the Grindavik and the source thing. The next eruption was longer. It had a butterfly pattern for the first time we saw the fissure opening in two directions, creating also phreatic eruptions, covered the large area compared to the previous one also. And the next one in the March, April was this one creating a phreatic eruption. It lasted, up, of course, for a while and was one of the larger ones. And it came then to this latest one, the ninth one in this old series I call Reckonous Fire in the late uh, August. It created very high and tall fountains, 176 to 75 meters of lava jumping into the air. And it was a very volatile reach. It has spread a large area, but mostly confined to the north. So it didn't reach the south part of the Sorsengi volcanic system. Uh, our simplistic models were revised during these uh, nine eruptions from this very simple one to this more complex structure, which shows the reservoir as a two stage and the deeper one and the shallower one which was a big advancement. Also, the delay between each eruption pointed to the fact that we have to remember magma is a non-Newtonian fluid. That was probably, in my view, one of the most biggest discoveries I made about these volcanoes. And uh, volcanic earthquakes are needed, and tectonic earthquakes are needed to actually shake this uh, ketchup-like magma to help it to flow and eventually erupt, create bubbles practically, like a fizzy drink. This is a summary of what I've called the Reckonous Fires. Over the past uh, few years, we had nine of them and we expect more.